Hey pilots, this is Craig Gamble with Cargo Letter Service USA. And today I'm just going to go over real quickly on uh, laser measuring and how we go about it over here. And uh, as you can see, there's our laser beam hitting the target. And it's done via rail check system down there. And we'll walk over there real quickly to show you what I'm talking about firsthand. So it's an aluminum profile. And we have a laser carriage that's on linear bearings. It's wrapped completely by linear bearings, so it's very smooth. And not only that, does it glide easy and is it really smooth, but it's true. Whether I have it at this end of the rail check, nine mi over nine millimeters of away from the target down there, or all the way up here, you know, um, which is about four meters away, um, that laser beam is hitting the exact same spot. Right there on the target, that exact same spot. And uh, there was a day five, six years ago that I used to handhold my laser device. I didn't have the rail and you just aim it and you hit it anywhere on this target and you take your, take your reading. Sometimes it's, you know, it's hard to hit this. What is this about a five inch diameter circle? Um, when you're hand holding a device and there's times I'd hit the wall and whatever but I know by the measurement deviation that I was off so I'd re reshoot it because when you aim it and push the button it, it, it moves a little bit it's hard to push a button and not move it and uh, so you'd get a reading a, a laser beam here then here then over here but you take those readings but they're not hitting the exact same spot so you're that's where I want to say uh your comparative analysis between the line lengths or even from laser in the same line after you've done malleon loops, you know, the same line again or even just it again, it's not a, it's not as accurate because, you know, if I hit here versus here, take the same line measurement and let's say it's not a line that can stretch, let's say it's a cable and I hit it beam here and I hit a beam there, it, it, there's gonna be a, a difference in the measurement. And so that's what I'm trying to eliminate here. I'm not discounting the handheld method. There's times for it, especially when you're out and about on a competition, and that's the only way to go about it. I mean, you, got, you have your, you, you know, you got this nice little uh, laser target system set up on a, clamped onto a table with this five kilograms of weight. And that's just going to be the only way you can do it out there. But when you're at a facility, um, I'm choosing to go this route with the, the rail check system because of what I was telling you. It's hitting the exact same spot every stinking time. And that way, when I compare, all my measurements are done the same way. So it, to me, it's a more accurate comparative analysis of the lines, lengths, and, and then between the cells. Because so I not only... Am I measuring the line lengths, but I'm also comparing the line lengths to each other. So A to B, B to C, and A to C, you know, so A1 to B1, and B1 to C1, and, and C1 to A1, I'm, I'm doing that as well. And so when you are hitting the exact same spot, to me, that's just a more accurate way of doing your comparative analysis between everything and that way um, things will, I think are just a little more perfect and that's what we like to do things here we just try to make them as perfect we get them I mean it's not an exact science but it, they're all there are hard, a lot of different ways that you can uh, fudge things or not fudge things but what's the word I want to say uh, mess things up you know just even the laser device you choose I mean um, if I chose the like like, like uh, uh, D1, it's going to have an accuracy of plus or minus two millimeters. Um, then you got the like the D, Disto D2. Again, it's uh, I think plus or minus one and a half millimeters. Where this one here is a little more expensive. It's like twelve hundred bucks, but it's plus or minus one millimeter. And so I mean the price jump from the the, the I can't even say the, the brand name L E I C A. Uh, D1, which is like, I think it was like 120 bucks versus this one, which is 1200 uh, Almost, you know, way over a thousand dollars difference where the 
D2 is like $230. And so, you know, you jump to this, which is a thousand dollars more to get that half a millimeter better in accuracy. And that's what we chose to do. And so, um, you know, if I can with the D1, it'd be 120 bucks and I would have had, I'd save a whole one millimeter of accuracy, but I had the D2, then I'd save a half a millimeter. And that's what, just what we chose to do. You know, I'm not trying to bash anybody else there and what they're doing on, in their realm. I'm just saying here, I try to do things a, as best as I can with the means I have. And it's fortunate that I have a pension to live off with the fire service. So I'm not living off my income from for servicing periwinkles. This is something I enjoy to do and I do it because it's my passion. And um, I'm not here to make money. I'm here to provide a service to the community. And so I just, uh, you know, wanted to share that with you all. And you all have a good day out there and fly safe and be sure to service your gliders as they're mentioned in your in your manuals. It, it's important. It's just like oil changes on your car. You want to prolong the life of it, that's what you got to do.